All right, everybody. Um, here is your video lecture for uh, your block day this week of September 14th of 2020. Uh, this is a course on the topic of campaigns and elections. Um, and it's specific to do with strategies used to win um, a campaign. Um, or, excuse me, a strategy to win an election, sorry. Oops. What is a political campaign? So political campaigns are, are organized efforts to gather support and persuade citizens to vote uh, for a candidate in an election. Uh, political campaigns uh, usually happen every two years, not every four years like we're used to when we're looking at president, but every two years uh, because we have state and local and federal elections. And when you're in the House of Representatives for any given uh, political um political um, like term, um, that is only a two-year term. So uh, we usually hold these things and campaigns take place every two years. So that's why you might, uh, especially in Pontiac here, um, every two years you'll see like Adam Kinzinger signs and stuff like that because um, he is uh, generally the uh, primary candidate who usually is going to win uh, most of your um, House of Representative elections at the federal level. And then at the state level, you guys uh, generally send uh, Tom Bennett um, to uh, the state house as a representative. Um, I live in Normal, and, and the state representative that we send is a guy by the name of Dan Brady, who I, I want to say is actually from Pontiac or Chenoa, so he's actually a, um, a local guy, um, but he has been a representative for ever since I was a kid. So, I mean, that's that's been the guy for a long dang time. Ah, there we go. Space bar work finally. Okay. Social media obviously plays a big role. I think uh, probably in the modern era, the person who like wielded this um, in, in a disproportionately way in compared to his, their opponent, um, and I, I think this probably won him the election um, just in his capability of uh, using social media uh, to get his message out there and campaign, do a lot of campaigning, especially with young people, and that was Barack Obama. So Barack Obama had a really, really – um, intricate team uh, that was all about like data analytics, handled social media, stuff like that. Um, I want to say J.B. Pritzker, our current governor, also utilized some of the same types of strategies when it came to social media. So that allows you to do things like micro target. So if you've ever been on social media and you got some random political ad on your on your account, well, that's because an algorithm based upon you and how you search and the stuff that you do online that algorithm is keeping track of your data. And that's why you see like political ads, which will be ramping up. Um, you know, you'll probably begin to see those more and more in your social media feeds and might already have been seeing those. So uh, when it comes to social media, it has become an essential part of any campaign, like it says on the slide there. Um, a candidate can connect with millions of potential voters. Uh, President Trump is excellent at this. He's probably one of the best um, at wielding social media and bending messages to his will than any president in, in modern history that I can think of. Um, of course, you know, and that is, you know, just just a happenstance of the era we live in. You know, I mean, you've never had a president be able to communicate with his supporters instantly like that. Um, and, you know, not for nothing, uh, whether you agree with the language and the way he goes about um, getting his message out there, um, you know, by and large, it is a victory for freedom of speech because even if you disagree or disagree, um, it's not a la carte government, right? You, you, you have to take the good with the bad. Um, and for um, any of the bad, you know, there, there are some silver linings that come out of that, um, regardless of how you feel about rhetoric and, and, and the messaging and stuff like that. Um, obviously, there's a wide access to social media platforms. Uh, you can, you know, have, gosh, I can't even tell you. Um, I'm, I'm getting older, so the, the platforms that I know of or that I'm, I'm active on are minimal at best. I don't have much of a social media presence, but, I mean, I totally understand the phenomenon and why it is certainly so addictive and a primary way in which we get our information. So if you're going to get your information uh, on campaigns, elections, or your news from social media, this is a natural extension um, of, of that, of that technology. Advertising, of course, is a big way to do it. And that's one of the things that you guys are going to do for your website is you are going to create a political campaign ad. 
Um, hence, in a couple slides, or maybe even the next slide, where you'll see a couple of ads that um, are from YouTube for uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Promotional advertising is a method for political campaigns to convince voters to vote for or dislike a candidate. Right? I always get mailers from my union telling me who I should vote for um, because our union has is political and they donate to politicians. Um, and not not always are they're, they're politicians that I see eye to eye with or agree with or would ever vote for. Um, so just because you get those advertisements, you know, they're just, again, just trying to, to get you to, uh, well, um, be, be interested and engaged with what's going on. And I will say uh, something for your generation as compared to mine is I am noticing more political engagement with our young people, which is exciting to see. Um, I really like seeing, you know, politically engaged young people um, because it was the disengagement of the generation before you that um, has made things more difficult. And by make, when I say making things more difficult, I mean compromise, which is what our system is supposed to be about. Um, so with the advertising, obviously these things play frequently on TV months ahead of an election. We are a rare... A country in which we we don't black ads out, you know, up leading up to an election. In various countries, they actually black ads out, so that way you can't see uh, political campaign ads for like maybe 72 hours before an election or, or things like that. Uh, Great Britain and the U United Kingdom is one of these uh, places that does like a media blackout um, for a certain amount of time leading up to an election. Um, so that way, you know, it's not something that you're constantly bombarded with and and, you know, Ads, you know, they have a specific slanted message. There's tremendous, tremendous amount of bias in political campaign ads. Um, and that's done intentionally. Um, they're not hiding that bias from you. It should be easy to pick out when you watch the ads for your assignment um, coming out of this video lecture. Um, but they're either going to be fo focused positive or negative, right? And there's really not going to be much in between that positive or negative. Strategies, uh, you know, a couple of things include tone and focus. You know, you'll notice when you're watching the ad, the tone and focus of both are are different. You know, one ad is inherently more positive than the other. And I think you'd be surprised by which one it is, um, especially when we discuss these in class. Um, so tone and focus, you know, are you getting a, a hopeful or a fearful image of the future? Is the primary object of your ad, um, is it achievements like things that you've done, or is it going to be opponent's shortcomings? And you will certainly understand which one of those ads, either Biden or Trump, focuses on that exact thing. Here are both ads. Um, you know, these are just the clips. Uh, in Google Classroom, you will have a separate two, two video postings, one of this Keep Up Joe um, ad and one, for, one of the Four More Years Trump ad. Both will have um, edited and questions that are embedded into uh, the actual like video. So it'll like stop, you'll see a little box pop up, and it might not always be a question that you have to answer. You just have to pause the video for a moment and read and see what you have to do. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, answer, answering the, the following questions for each campaign ad. Okay, which I always, th these questions are, are already embedded in there. Um, so there are a few other questions that I want you to, to answer as well. But these three questions are in each ad. Um, not, not, you know, I didn't have all the same questions for both. Um, but these were the basic ones uh, for each ad that you will see that will pop up that you will need to jot down responses to. Events, right? Um, you know, one thing that I think our current president is 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 pretty good at is rallies and events. Um, he is certainly very much um, capable of rallying crowds and and getting people excited. I mean, that that is that is certainly one of his strengths, no doubt about it. Um, candidates speak to large groups of supporters at that point, right? So you're going to be seeing a lot of people who are who are understandably going to be abs going absolutely ballistic for their candidate. Because uh, they they paid to be there, right? I mean, um, you know, very you know, there's not a, not a lot of people want to pay to go to a political rally. Some people pay good money um, to get into an arena or an event to see their political candidate. 
Um, and and not to take anything away from Joe Biden, he seems to have uh, quite a bit of support. But I would say that probably our current president is is probably the better of the two. Also, uh, one moment, my my phone is ringing, so I have to pause the recording. Oops, let me go back. Sorry about that. Phone was ringing, so I'll edit that back out. So if you're probably didn't even know because it's already been edited out. All right, but public events such as rallies, the candidate um, wants to speak to larger groups. Um, they want to create an environment that presents your campaign as strong and impactful. Right? You want to inspire people to contribute to funding, fundraising to support your campaign. And you want to get your message out to a wide audience. So you want to be seen and be heard often. Okay? I mean, you don't want people to, to forget that um, you know, you're the presidential candidate. You know, so you got to be on the, it's called being on the campaign trail. So you have to, to actually like go uh, to certain places all over the country and speak directly to those audience because your message uh, might not get through if somebody's watching a debate where the topics tend to be very broad, very general with no substantive answers. So what is going to be your strategy? So what is going to be uh, the way your party will use things like social media, advertising? You're going to create a campaign ad for that one and public events. Um, think about which issues you're going to focus on. Again, that's something that, that I asked you guys to do um, for your um, remote lesson. And uh, how you're going to coordinate that strategy um, that's going to use all three of these components. Okay. And that is it for your video lecture. So um, I hope that you watched the entire thing. And if you did... Here's the passcode quiz. So your passcode quiz for this week. So if you watch to the end and you are going to be given a quiz and the passcode for this is Indians. So for this week, your passcode quiz and the question you are going to be answered, which will be your name and what the passcode is, the passcode is Indians. Good luck.